It is indeed a delight to be here once again. I uh, enjoy talking with many of you during the course of the day. So if you see me sitting around or standing around, whatever, please come up and talk to me because I enjoy that very, very much. I love stories. And I'm very grateful that God loves stories as well. In fact, the largest single genre of scripture is story. It's narrative. All the Pentateuch, or at least most of the Pentateuch, all the historical books, the Gospels, the Book of Acts, and many portions of other scripture are all stories. And you as filmmakers are really storytellers. You're using a different medium than a pen and ink, but you're telling stories. Tonight I'd like to tell you a story about two men. One who learned the blessing of humility, and the other who learned the danger of greed. This is the story of Naaman the leper. Now Naaman was commander of the army of the king of Aram. He was a great man in the sight of his master and highly regarded because through him the Lord had given victory to Aram. He was a valiant soldier. But <clears throat> he had leprosy. Now bands from Aram had gone out and taken captive a young girl from Israel, and she served Naaman's wife. She said to her mistress, if only my master would see the prophet who's in Samaria, he would cure him of his leprosy. Mm -hmm. Naaman went to his master and told him what the girl from Israel had said. Hmm. By all means, go, the king of Aram replied. I will send a letter to the king of Israel. So Naaman left, taking with him ten talents of silver, six thousand shekels of gold, and ten sets of clothing. The letter that he took to the king of Israel read, with this letter, I'm sending my servant Naaman to you, so that you may cure him of his leprosy. As soon as the king of Israel read the letter, he tore his robes and said, am I God? Can I kill and bring back to life? Why does this fellow send someone to me to be cured of his leprosy? See how he's trying to pick a quarrel with me? When Elisha, the man of God, heard that the king of Israel had torn his robes, he sent him this message. Why have you torn your robes? Have the man come to me, and you'll know that there's a prophet in Israel. So Naaman came with his horses and chariots and stopped at the door of Elisha's house. Elisha sent a messenger to say to him, uh, go, uh, wash yourself seven times in the Jordan, and your flesh will be restored, and you'll be cleansed. <laughs> Naaman went away angry and said, I thought that he would surely come out to me and stand and call in the name of the Lord his God, wave his hand over the spot and cure me of my leprosy. I'm not a ban on far part of the rivers of Damascus better than any of the waters of Israel. Couldn't I wash them and be healed? So he turned and went off in a rage. Naaman's servants went to him and said, My father, if the prophet had told you to do some great thing, would you not have done it? How much more than when he tells you, wash and be cleansed? So he went down and dipped himself in the Jordan. Seven times, the man of God had told him. And his flesh was restored. And he came clean like that of a young boy. Then Naaman and all his attendants went back to the man of God. He stood before him and said, Now I know that there is no God in all the world except in Israel. 
Please, accept now a gift from your servant. The prophet answered, As surely as the Lord lives whom I serve, I will not accept a thing. And even though Naaman urged him, he refused. If you will not, said Naaman, please, let me or servant be given as much earth as a pair of mules can carry. For your servant will never again make burnt offerings and sacrifices to any other god but the Lord. But may your Lord forgive your servant this one thing. When my master enters the temple of Rimon to bow down, and he is leaning on my arm, and I bow there also. When I bow down in the temple of Rimon, may the Lord forgive your servant for this. Go in peace, Elisha said. After Naaman had traveled some distance, Gehazi, the servant of Elisha, the man of God, said to himself, My master was too easy on this Aramean Naaman by not accepting from him what he brought. <laughs> as surely as the Lord lives, I will run after him and get something from him. <laughs> so Gehazi hurried after Naaman. When Naaman saw him running toward him, he got down from the chariot to meet him. Is everything all right? he asked. <laughs> everything is all right, Gehazi answered. My master sent me to say, two young men from the company of the prophets have just come to me from the hill country of Ephraim. Please give them a uh, talent of silver and <clears throat> two sets of clothing. By all means, take two talents, said Naaman. He urged Gehazi to accept them, and then tied up the two talents of silver in two bags with two sets of clothing. He gave them to two of his servants, and they carried them ahead of Gehazi. When Gehazi came to the hill, he took the things from the servants and put them away in his house. He sent the men away, and they left. <clears throat> then he went in and stood before his master, Elisha. Where have you been, Gehazi? Elisha asked. Hmm? Uh, your servant didn't go anywhere, Gehazi answered. But Elisha said to him, Was not my spirit with you when the man got down from his chariot to meet you? Is this the time to take money or to accept clothes Olive groves, vineyards, flocks, herds, or men servants and maidservants. Naaman's leprosy will cling to you and to your descendants forever. Then Gehazi went from Elisha's presence, and he was leprous, as white as snow. And that is the real story of Naaman the leper. <laughs>